Small SUVs are among the most popular cars on sale. Walk down any street, especially in a big city, and you'll probably see loads of them around. But with so much choice, how can a new small SUV stand out? Well, this is the new Lexus LBX, and it's different from all of its small SUV rivals. In fact, it's so different and so good that we think it's the best new car that's been launched in the last 12 months. In this review, we're explaining why. So the LBX is an all new SUV and it's in a very big market with loads of other options like the Ford Puma, the Skoda Kamek, the Audi Q2, the VW T-Roc. But the reason this stands out compared to all of its rivals is the fact that it's the only small SUV with a premium badge and a hybrid setup. It has had a bit of a head start in life though because underneath the LBX shares quite a lot of its parts with the Toyota Yaris Cross because Toyota owns Lexus. But the fact that those two cars have some similarities is no bad thing. Because the Yaris Cross offers incredible efficiency. It's decent to drive. It's a very good small SUV. So what's the Lexus spin on those ingredients? Well, it's resulted in something that looks very different. You can see outside it bears no resemblance at all to the Yaris Cross. And inside, it's the same story. Now, we're well used to Lexus delivering really plush, nicely finished interiors. The NX, the RZ, they're great inside, but they can cost more than £60,000. The LBX starts at less than £30,000. Now, we're not trying to say that isn't a lot of money, because clearly it is. But inside, this really looks and feels like an expensive product. So listen to the thunk of the door as you close it. You've also got plush materials everywhere on top of the dashboard, on the doors, the armrests are really nicely padded, everything's brilliantly screwed together. This is a properly fantastic interior and definitely the best small SUV interior that you can buy. And it's also great that on lots of the trim levels, you have a choice of interior colours that you can choose from. So you're not just stuck with a dark colour inside to make it feel a bit drab, like most other rivals have. But you can see, even if you do have a dark colour in your LBX, like this one here, it still looks really nice. Now, the design and the layout of this interior is clean and minimalist, but you do still have physical controls for the air conditioning, you have a volume as well and all the switch gears really nicely damped it all feels very expensive and it's certainly better than the setup that you have in the VW T-Roc which is all touch sensitive and very fiddly and distracting to use while you're driving you definitely don't have the same problem in here this feels like a really big step up from cars with a setup like that all LBXs get a 9.8 inch touchscreen infotainment system and it's got a reasonably simple layout the icons are big enough to be able to hit them fairly confidently on the move while you're driving. It's also got pretty quick response time, the graphics are nice, and you get wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto as standard. As for the driver display, on the lower trim levels, you have a seven inch digital display, but as you work your way up the trims, you can get this bigger 12.3 inch fully digital driver display and a head up display, which has a rather unusual feature that enables you to use these pads on the steering wheel to cycle through some different menus on the head-up display itself. Now this might look like something which is actually fairly fiddly and complicated, but it really doesn't take much to get your head around it and it's fairly intuitive. As for the driving position itself, it is very good in the LBX. You've got a lot of adjustment in the steering wheel and in the seat. In fact, the only problem might be if you're over six foot or have particularly long legs, you might just wish that the seat went a little bit further back than it does. And also, even by small SUV standards, the driving position itself is not particularly high, and it doesn't feel like some high-riding SUV or anything like that. But the visibility is no issue at all. You've got a great view out of the front. It's a little bit more restricted at the back, but you get a reversing camera and front and rear parking sensors as standard, so that doesn't really matter. In terms of storage, it's really impressive up front. You've got a cup holder here. You have another one underneath this armrest, which you can slide back to reveal. And it's great that you can also just cover that up and make it all look a bit neater. Then you've got a bigger storage compartment underneath it. You can move this cup holder and you can even remove it completely if you want to. Then at the top of the center console, you've got this storage tray, which on premium trim and above gives you a wireless phone charging pad. You've got three USB-C chargers as standard as well. And then underneath all of this, you've got another storage tray there. In fact, really the only slight complaint is that the door bins are a bit on the small side, as is the glove box. 
But really, in every area, this is a fantastic small SUV interior. Things aren't quite so great in the back. So even in the small SUV class, rear legroom is pretty restricted. It is good though that you've got a lot of space under the seat in front of you, even in its lowest position, to put your feet. However, if you are six foot, you will not be able to sit up straight in the back without your head brushing the roof lining. Adults will be able to fit back here, but if rear seat space is a real priority for you with your small SUV, then the T-Rock, the Kamek are far more accommodating than the LBX. But for everyone else, if you're only gonna have kids in the back or if rear seats are just an added bonus for you, then it's absolutely fine. The boot space on offer in the LBX depends on which version you go for. So if you have a front wheel drive LBX, you get 402 liters of storage back here. But if you go for a four wheel drive version, then the boot shrinks by quite a lot, down to 317 liters. So for some context, an Audi Q2 offers 405 liters in its boot, a Kamek, 400 litres, a VW T-Roc 445 litres. So this is a front wheel drive version of the LBX and you can see the space that you do get is a simple shape. You've got these two cubbies either side at the boot entrance, but there's nothing really clever to point out in the boot of the LBX. You don't get a height adjustable boot floor. So you can see you're left with this pretty big loading lip here. There's no underfloor storage. You can fold down the rear seats, but if you do, they don't lie flat. So there's quite a big step up from the boot floor. And another disappointing thing is that the Yaris Cross a very similar SUV to this, can split fold its rear seats 40, 20, 40. So the three rear seats can go down individually in some versions of that car. But with the LBX, you can only split fold them 60, 40 in these two chunks that you see here. So the LBX might not be the most practical small SUV around, but it still has a fantastic interior up front. And it's very impressive under the bonnet as well. So no matter which version of the car you go for, you will get the same hybrid setup. And it's similar to what you get in the Yaris Cross, but there are some differences. Both cars get a 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol engine plus a small electric motor. But Lexus has tweaked the engine and the hybrid setup to improve performance, refinement and efficiency in the LBX compared to the Yaris Cross. So while the Yaris Cross takes 10.7 seconds to do 0 to 62 miles an hour, the LBX will do the same sprint in 9.2 seconds, which is a lot quicker and it really is noticeable on the road. Granted, the LBX isn't the quickest small SUV around, but it's certainly quick enough. And Lexus has also just revealed a performance-focused concept of the LBX with a 300 brake horsepower version of the engine that you find in the GR Yaris. It hasn't said whether it will actually make production though. What we do know is you can buy an LBX now with either front wheel drive or four wheel drive. And if you go for a four wheel drive variant, then that gives you an extra motor on the rear axle, which should in theory improve traction in slippery or wet conditions. And that is something that's very rare in the small SUV class, to be honest. Those four wheel drive versions of the car are a bit slower from 0 to 62 miles an hour, officially taking 9.6 seconds to do that. And you can only have the four wheel drive version of the LBX in the more expensive trim levels. But while it's unlikely to transform this into some off-road champion, it is still a useful option to have in the lineup. Now, you probably aren't buying an LBX for its incredible straight line pace, and you're probably not gonna take it green laning either. More likely, if you're looking at an LBX, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of your driving around town. And the good news is, this is an environment where the LBX really excels. And a lot of that is down to its fantastic hybrid setup. The reason it's so good is because in terms of refinement at these low speeds, it is well ahead of its closest competitors. It's very quiet in here because it can travel on pure electric power for short distances at least. So it's very, very quiet. And when the engine does kick in to help out the electric motor, you hardly notice that happen at all. The other huge benefit of this hybrid setup is the fuel economy that it offers. So officially, the LBX can manage up to 62.7 miles per gallon. And we know from the Yaris Cross, which has a very similar hybrid setup to this, that car can achieve incredible real world fuel economy, particularly around town. And this is just a nice thing to drive because it's got well-weighted steering, so it's very easy to maneuver and get it into tight parking spots. The brakes are progressive and very easy to bring the car to a smooth stop. And it also has a CVT automatic gearbox, which at these low speeds, you hardly notice at all, which is probably the biggest compliment you can pay to an automatic gearbox. However, as with all CVTs, the problem comes when you wanna go a bit faster. 
if you want a quick burst of pace, or if you're joining a motorway and you're trying to get up to faster speeds, that is when it sends the revs soaring and they stay up there until you reach your desired speed. And that can be a little bit grating. But that isn't as much of an issue as it is in the Aris Cross, because in the Toyota, when you're on the motorway, the engine can make a bit of a racket and it can be screaming away much more noticeably than it does in the LBX, where things are a lot calmer as you battle your way out of the city and into the countryside. And what about ride comfort? Well, in contrast to some of Lexus's more expensive products, the LBX has a ride that is on the firm side. So at low speeds especially, the suspension can fidget around over imperfections. But on the plus side, that means that body control is very good. It doesn't feel wallowy through corners at all. And also at higher speeds, things generally feel more composed and calmer than they do at low speeds. So the LBX has a fantastic interior, a brilliant hybrid setup, a posh badge. You might be expecting that this car is very, very expensive. But the good news is that isn't the case, at least depending on the trim level that you go for. So yes, it is priced above mainstream fuel powered cars like the T-Roc and the Kamek, but it's impressive that the entry level version of this car with a hybrid setup is priced roughly in line with a petrol powered Audi Q2. And the most expensive versions of this car are still cheaper than a Range Rover Evoque. And don't forget, this is also cheaper than a fully electric alternative. As you might expect from a Lexus, the LBX comes very well equipped and there's a wide range of trims to choose from. The entry level trim is called Urban and includes 17 inch alloy wheels, automatic LED headlights, dual zone climate control, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, all round parking sensors and a rear view camera. Premium trim is the next level up and adds heated front seats, faux leather upholstery, tinted rear windows, a wireless phone charging pad, ambient interior lighting and automatic wipers. Above that, you have Premium Plus, which adds useful features like a 12.3 inch digital driver display and a head up display, as well as larger 18 inch alloy wheels. Premium Plus design adds a contrasting roof, different 18 inch wheels and upgraded leather upholstery. Above this, the price jumps quite a bit and there isn't really any crucial equipment. So we would definitely stick with the lower trims. Being a brand new car, we won't have any specific reliability data for the LBX for some time yet. But what we do know is that Lexus itself has a fantastic record when it comes to reliability. In fact, the Japanese manufacturer has finished number one in our reliability survey for an incredible seven years in a row. So you can buy an LBX safe in the knowledge that you should have a very good chance of trouble-free ownership. You get a three-year warranty as standard and you can extend that up to 10 years or 100,000 miles as long as you take it to a Lexus dealer every year for a service. Euro NCAP has not yet safety tested the LBX, so we can't tell you how many stars out of five it gets from them. But all versions have automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. The Yaris Cross, for reference, got a five star rating back in 2021. If you want to buy an LBX, it's a relatively simple process to spec one up because there is just one engine choice, the brilliant hybrid setup that we've got in this car. There's more choice when it comes to the trims, but we think Premium Plus is the best in the lineup. And then in terms of options, you've only really got paint and interior colors to choose from, which keeps things nice and simple. And you get loads of kit as standard anyway. So the Lexus LBX is a new small SUV with a fantastic interior, a brilliantly efficient hybrid system. It's very well equipped and it's made by a manufacturer that can't be beaten for reliability. In the last 12 months, no other new car has moved the game on as much as this has. And that's why it's the 2024 Watt Car Car of the Year. Thanks for watching this review. If you want to see another one, then click there. And if you want to read more about our 2024 cars of the year and you want to get a great deal on your next car, then click there to go to whatcar.com.